beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see that it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed and stay blessed for souls saved, for destinies transformed, for lives touched, bodies healed. Thank you, Repo Shabaria Kate, Rende Mediasha Tabala Kato Shataya. We give you praise, we give you praise, Father. We are so grateful. We are so grateful. Thank Him, thank Him. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. And Heavenly Father, as a family of faith, we want to say a very big thank you for thus far you have led us. We thank you for the great and the mighty things that have happened in this glorious house by means of this symbolic and prophetic and apostolic movement called Koinonia. We are grateful to you, Lord, for the gift of Apostle Joshua Selman to this body. We say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you for lives transformed, for souls saved, for destinies unlocked, for purpose revealed, for miracles, signs, wonders. We say thank you, Jesus. And as we enter into this new year, it's a new season for us. You have called that this is a season of triumph. On the left, on the right, above and beneath. We triumph all round in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. The path of the just is, a, is as a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Lord, we say that this is just the beginning. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. If you believe that the best is yet to come, I need you to shout, Jesus! Let's slap those hands together. God bless you. Please be seated. Good evening, everyone. Spiritual Intelligence Part 2. Just pray in one minute and say, Lord, visit me, speak to me tonight in the name of Jesus. Go ahead. Speak to me, O oh God. My destiny depends on it. Speak to me. Oh God. You are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever 
that no man who walked with him will walk in darkness lord we acknowledge your light we acknowledge your wisdom i join your people to say thank you thank you for everything you have done we will never never be able to thank you enough for lives changed lord if there is anything that has happened through my life if there is anything that has happened through this ministry we owe it all up to you. And we're not ashamed to say thank you tonight. Receive all the praise. This is what it's all about. And Lord, we decree and declare that we are committed to following you. I'm committed to following you. That you will speak to us and cause that we hear you, even when it does not make sense. Cause us to trust you. Cause us to believe you. May we never be ahead of you, O oh God. May we always allow you to lead in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we renew once again as a ministry our covenant of partnership. That, oh God, we remain followers, pursuers, seekers of your presence, seekers of your ways. You made your ways known to Moses. And Lord, we declare in the name of your son that we will follow. It doesn't matter we will follow regardless of how comfortable or otherwise it is we will follow you in the name of jesus so father we dedicate this moment very precious moment to you i thank you for your people the workers in this ministry the leaders in this ministry all those connected to this ministry the financial partners who have lifted our hands through their seats and sacrifices those who have labored in secret and in open to see your glory come i pray oh god that you bless them let no man go unrewarded receive all the glory 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you. Spiritual intelligence. I didn't meet the testimonies, but I heard everyone rejoicing, so I want to believe they were powerful testimonies. Let me just say something before we get to the word. Um, thank you so much for not only believing in the ministry, for believing in me and what God is doing in my life. I know that you love me. I know that you believe me. You believe in the anointing. Thank you so much for your partnership. But then I just want to say two things very quickly. Number one, I want you to trust the things you are learning here. Praise the Lord. Um, while we were on our way back from the trip, my mind was on the meeting and I was just thinking, there are very anointed men and women of God in this place who I would have easily just called and said, look, I'm so tired, I'm worn out, please can I rest? have a crusade tomorrow and say look let me just rest bless the people of God by God's grace we're connected to very anointed and blessed people that love me and believe in what God is doing and I could easily just call them and say look come and be a mighty blessing to the people of God I don't do these things by myself just because I am not replaceable that's not the idea there is a picture that the lord has shown me about what he wants us to become are we together now every teaching listen carefully every truth that you hear being shared here was not emotionally fabricated to keep ministry going i wish you understand what goes in to bring every word here I preach an average of two to four messages every week it is hard work to prepare a message very hard work are we together aside from the prayers the preparation the physical constraint the research etc I do these things because there is something God is making us become please I want to encourage everyone don't just believe in me and love me and trust me which I greatly appreciate but submit yourself to the things you are learning these keys will make you become something there is an end some of us by the grace of god are already tasting of this mold we're already seeing how much our lives are becoming some of us are just catching up and others have tested of this for a while but i want to encourage you every series every teaching just follow them the way they are don't try to tamper with any equation you are giving be that childlike and watch something happen in your life are we together i think it's quite arrogant for anyone to not have result and criticize anybody who has it archbishop benson idahosa said um you only have a right to criticize a person when you can do twice what he has done once our society is full of people who believe they know what they are doing and you see the trouble about this pride is that the nonsense will not show now after years of wasting your time you will find out that the bible calls it shadow boxing but the apostle said we have not taught you cunningly devised fables the things you are learning here are not my ideas they are older than me the truths that come here represent the wisdom of God. You hear me sing that song. Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river. There are people who have crossed this river. We are not trying to invent something new. There's nothing about the anointing that is new. There's nothing about generational impact that is new. So I want to encourage us, pay attention to these things. Don't get so familiar and then don't listen. No. Open up your heart. Don't just write. Don't just say amen. Don't just fall down. Don't just roll. Believe it. Receive it in your heart 
and be diligent be diligent to apply it listen i give you one guarantee let me tell you this and i've been saying this for many years you will never never fail if you listen to what i'm telling you believe me there are people who will think these things are just jargons and then after many years the danger is they will now have children and families yet they don't have an idea of the systems of god and they will frustrate a whole generation as a result of their ignorance please i like you to lift your voice in one minute and Do not take your word lightly. It is capable of changing my life. It is capable of bringing the anointing into my life. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and I will forever see It's your spirit that opens to me the treasures of your word. And I will forever sing your name. I will sing. I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing out for joy. Last week we began a series that is aimed at giving us spiritual intelligence. Please listen. It is dangerous to live in ignorance as to the systems of the spirit. You hear me repeat some of these things again and again. Your victory and my victory in this life is not only dependent on what Christ has done but dependent on our comprehending the same and applying the principles that will make it happen in our lives the disaster that occur in several lives regardless of what christ has done is proof that the work of christ by itself will not bring you results are we together there must be an understanding and we must know how to engage the word and um, there are a number of concepts that we discussed we took one last week which was the spirituality of life that was the first intelligence that the lord began to walk in our minds and we investigated this very thoroughly life is spiritual how many of you were blessed last week yeah it is important for us to understand the spirituality of life life is not scientific life is not intellectual life is not emotional life is spiritual are we together and the earlier we understood spiritual things and how to navigate the part of life the earlier we came to this understanding the better the swifter our progress would manifest there are so many people who trivialize the spirituality of life and um it is to their detriment everything about your life to this moment is spiritual so we'll continue we'll take on one just four concepts in this series that i believe that the lord wants to burn in our heart number two god is almighty write it down and then listen to me number one life is spiritual that's the first intelligence you need to have if you want to reign second god is almighty 
Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 17 media let's walk together Deuteronomy 10 17 you will never be able to obey God listen carefully you will never be able to do the giant things that the Lord desires from you fulfill purpose an assignment if you do not have a revelation of the might of God you can have a revelation of his love you can have a revelation of his goodness but if you want to command victory in your life you need to know that God is not mighty he is all mighty Deuteronomy chapter 10 okay verse 17 let me just read it from here if you have it let's read it together if you don't I'll just read alone one to read for the Lord your God is God of gods a mighty and an awesome God who regarded not persons nor take it reward some version says nor take it bribe it says for the Lord your God is what God of I've taught you what this means that every time one thing is compared against another is trying to show the all-surpassing excellency so he says this Lord your God that you serve he's not just one of the gods he's not just one of the lords please listen this God that we serve is not just the best option of the many he is the only option available there are so many people who cannot obey God today there are so many people who cannot believe God so many pastors businessmen family people are unable to receive the instructions of God are unable to take steps of faith not because they cannot read their Bibles they do not know how mighty and how great God is one of the things that you must burn in your spirit as you begin your journey to greatness is to know that God is mighty mighty Savior he can move the mountains listen to this song my God is mighty to save he is mighty to save forever he's the author of salvation he rose and conquered the grave Jesus conquered the grave there is nothing the Lord will ask me to do that I will be afraid of no I have caught a revelation of how mighty he is the reason why many people cannot obey God is not because they are disobedient they do not know that he is mighty listen look at this come Sam if if I tell Sam I will buy you a car tomorrow he will not just laugh the first thing Sam will do is to look at me and evaluate me my capacity financially based on whatever information he has at his disposal is that true so Sam will look at me if Sam does not know me he will go and ask someone who knows me is this guy wealthy enough to be able to buy you a car at will if he receives a testimony of my ability Sam will now stand and say I can believe you is that true if I if I say right now everyone in Koinonia just be listening to me welfare department go and buy minerals just pass it around you will never look and say apostle don't deceive us how much is minerals are we together so it's easy to believe me because subconsciously you have an understanding that I am able now if I say everybody just sit down we're going to pass car keys around you will say amen but what you mean is the prophecy for car keys because you look around and imagine so when God says I will bless you your understanding of him will judge what he has said and you say Lord I trust you but it's well I, you have a track record of fooling men God is almighty so God can speak to you and say son do this do that let me tell you something God never gives you instructions based on your ability 
he speaks to you as though he's talking to himself so don't be surprised to hear how how challenging his instructions will come when god speaks to you he speaks to himself so he's not going to degrade his standards just because your mind is trying to comprehend him are we together it's up to you by the ministry of the word and the spirit to rise in understanding and get to a point where you will count him faithful that was a testimony of abraham the bible says abraham although he was an hundred years he counted god faithful and so he wavered not at his faith through unbelief one day god will stand up and say son it's time to build a big cathedral son it's time to do this i would be stupid to stand and say god don't don't disappoint me no no i have made promises to people as a man and i've seen how they just rejoiced oh i will give you 10 naira i will help you to pay your school fees and they jump i've not given them any money didn't give them any check they just started jumping around what if i change my mind you don't think i will so you are happy our unbelief is proof we do not know god is almighty so when he told you you will marry you are still asking him question lord can't you just give me date and let two of us rest <laughs> I will bless you and you will prosper. Oh God, when? When? Do you know, do you know worry is a sign of lack of faith? Worry, believe me when I tell you this, it's an uncomfortable truth. Worry is a sign of lack of faith. No. When he's in charge, when you are in charge with him, there is no reason no reason no reason this is the revelation that is responsible for confidence when you see people move around it's not as if there is a charm in their pocket but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded that he is able looking at the great things that god has done today ENI is not six years. It's just koinonia that is six years. The meeting here. But even at this, it is still a humbling experience. Watching the things that God has done by his grace. Seeing the many things. Seeing his word come to pass. Do you believe him? Do you truly believe God? Don't tell me you believe God until you know that he is mighty not just that he's mighty he's willing to hold your hands when a man is willing to help you and you know that person has capacity to help you you trust him the word trust is from the word bata is best described pastor alpha's son is not even considering whether his father's hand is tired he's sitting happily and playing while the father takes responsibility for bringing the child here it's called trust the child has had a track record in his little life that my father loves me but my father is also strong strong enough and so he can afford to move around not minding whether the father is uncomfortable or not did god ever tell you he's tired of holding you did god ever tell you he he needed assistance his hand was paining him god is not moses the keeper of israel the bible says he neither sleeps what kind of a being is that you don't sleep nor slumber the bible says there is no searching of his understanding there's too much unbelief there are very few people that believe god you see it in their lives although they claim they trust him but the, 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 the way we act shows we don't trust him. I believe him. That's the song. He's able. He's able. He's able to bless you. He's able to keep you. He's able to bring his word to pass in your life. God is almighty. He's not going to borrow power from someone else and return it. No. 
he didn't store the power somewhere else he's not signing like a check like you go to the bank and plead with them to do a transfer no he is almighty no man voted him into power listen he doesn't store his anointing somewhere and he's insecure if they will take it the bible says once have i spoken twice have you heard uh -huh, help me that all 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 he never said he's the only one who can use it but he said it belongs to him alone witches can use it by certain manipulations of the laws of the spirit but hear me brothers and sisters all power the power to make wealth kabaratoshia the power for favor the power for increase the power for breakthrough the power for children the power that swallows up challenges that power belongs to god know this listen let me tell you ask anyone who knows me i thank god i've taught you about the gift of men i've taught you about the ministry of men but god cursed be i the day i will leave god to put my eye in a mortal man believing that he's the one who will help me look in my little life i have seen the inconsistencies of men it is foolish for me to sit down and tie my destiny to the word of a man no sir no sir no sir i judge him faithful i can tell you i want to help you and get angry tomorrow and say pastor alpha you offended me i will punish you i won't help you again that's a man for you i can say i want to help you but me too i was expecting help from someone from somebody how powerless that can be you are standing in the middle of help to help but there's no helper of god he checked around and nobody was greater than him so he swore by his name that by these two immutable things it is impossible listen i'm speaking to someone here you better believe god and say lord if you spoke to me about your my destiny let's go i believe i like joshua and caleb he said let us go up at once look at david who is this uncircumcised philistine the, 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 this all this fear about our lives fear about the future fear about ministry will i be rich will i marry will i have children how many will my pregnancy stay will i die will a plane crash will a car jam me all those things are results hear me will crowds come for my meeting what if they get angry one day and don't like me again those thoughts are a product of a lack of knowledge about how mighty god is I sing that song again savior he can move the mountains my god is mighty to save he is mighty to save forever author of salvation he rose and conquered the grave jesus conquered the grave savior talk like this I, I know what some of you are thinking when you hear people talk like this you just say they are lucky I mean you have food to eat you have this thing they kept in front as though we were born like that <laughs> let me tell you something very few people in this life even historically were ever born with any privilege it takes an understanding I remember clearly when the Lord would speak to me in the secret no results no results but i believed him i remember when he told me he would anoint me and he would do great things i remember when he began to give the blueprint of eni the blueprint of i remember those little instructions he gave on our way to crusade grounds 
hoping the world will work. Let me tell you something, Ejimi. Come, come. Let me tease this guy small. I love him. He's my friend. You see, when we started out, let me tell you something. That time, it wasn't like a crowd like this. There were few people. Now, I remember clearly, I told them that when we went to the crusade ground, we were going to meet all kinds of people. Blind, sick, and all of that. And I think he thought we were joking. And we had already planned that. That time, everybody was a minister. It wasn't like you were in welfare, you know. Mm -mm. So when it was time to pray, you would just choose at random. You didn't have the privilege to know what was wrong until you stood in front of the person. Are we together now? And I remember very clearly, Ejimi then and Jake's. When I started saying all those things, Ejimi got troubled one time and he said, come on. Let's, let's really find out. Are we going to, how, you know, trying to find out, I hope this anointing works. I hope those devils are going to be cast out. I remember, I, I hope you can remember, I remember one of the, the first day of the crusade, two of our ladies, they now went to meet a woman, you remember the story? They went to meet a woman who was deaf and dumb. You know, they came with all the zeal, had received impartation, we had fasted our lives, I mean, we're looking like skeletons, and then the ladies now laid hands, you know, oh God, you spoke to Joshua Selman, and I'm telling you, that woman was just looking like this. No miracle, no healing. It was so embarrassing. The ladies tried. How many of you know that when you try, you go around and go around, nothing happens? I remember one person, a Jimmy, I think it was a Jimmy that wanted to minister to, a young boy. And the boy looked at him and said, can you see that tree, sir? He said, we have tied people on it. He said, he can go and call. What did he say? He wants to go to the market and call the other people that tied so much. Yes. A very small child. I remember the shock on Ejimi's face. <laughs> Listen. We didn't look like much then. But we believed him. The third day of the crusade, the deaf and dumb woman spoke. Her ears opened. Remember? The first day nothing happened. It was so embarrassing, so embarrassing for the ladies. They came and met me. I said, don't worry, try it, do it again, your faith. And then on the third day, I just got angry. I said, okay, you people have tried. Look, this woman, let's deal with this thing before these villagers kill us here. See, you know why I'm telling you this and why I called him? It was faith. I remember while we were preparing for the crusade, he took his computer, his personal computer, he was the only one who had a computer then, not a laptop, a big screen computer. He took everything and put it on sale to carry all the money and supply for the crusade. These are hidden stories that you may never, never know. Never knew. I dedicated my scholarship 100%, 100%, 100% for the crusade sacrifices why because we knew god was mighty at a point we didn't have the money to pay where we lodged people as at that morning we were in trouble so we went to greet the king when we went to greet the king we exchanged pleasantries greeted him in the palace and then prayed for him we had a session with the pastors a pastor's conference it was a wonderful time people sowed some seeds plus the seed the king sent that was how we gathered the money. Listen, there was no assurance. No uncle, no auntie, no partner, but God. Everybody shout, but God. Thank you, Jimmy. I love you. God bless you. But God, when you bring God into the equation, the calculation changes. You have to know that. I had fainted, the Bible says, but God, but God. The psalmist said, if the Lord had not been our help, now may Israel say, if the Lord had not been our help. Listen, every other thing should happen to you but God. I'm prophesying to somebody. The shame should come but God. The interceptor. Every other thing should come but God. The trouble should come but God. When you add God to the equation, the calculation changes. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. One of the mysteries that are responsible for fearsome results 
responsible for the strange breakthrough in the lives of men is absolute trust in God based on an understanding of who he is he says be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might the revelation that he is mighty be strong let your stability be upon that I know I do not have the rent but God is faithful I don't know how it will happen but one thing I know is this God will help me he said I will lift up my eyes onto the hills from whence cometh my help he says my help cometh from the Lord the maker of heaven and earth apostle my father is dead I understand but God is still alive apostle my mother is dead my sisters have vowed that because I became a Christian no sponsor apostle there is there is no helper no there is a helper He's the one who can help men. Look, when God decides to come into your life and help you, you will be scared at the result. There is something called the help of men. We are products. Ebenezer, thus far, has the Lord helped. He says Uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped of the Lord. There are many people who remove God out of the equation of their lives. So they look at you and say, but I'm more intelligent than you. Why is your life making progress? Because I, I kept, I didn't add God. I put him in front of me. There are many arrogant people believing they, they do every calculation by themselves. Then they say, God, where are you? Just come and join the queue. Some of us have learned. We put God in front and we foolishly follow. Foolishly follow. If he moves this way, wherever we are, we turn back and say, God, let's keep going. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, what will happen? I shall fear no evil. Why? Not because I'm masculine. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Then he says, thou preparest a table for me. In the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over. Do you trust God? Do you believe God? It's a little teaching, but let me tell you something. Your life will be challenged by circumstances that will require your faith in God. No matter how hardworking you are, a day will come the only person you can cry to. I want you to glue this understanding hold his hands and never let him go you're all I want you're everything Lord. you're all to your journey of life is his presence and his word his presence and his word men will fail you not may fail will fail prepare for it the best and the most reliable of all of us will still fail brothers and sisters please listen to me so that you stop yourself from receiving heart shattering heartbreak I don't trust men no I don't I receive of their ministry but only as accredited by God I have pledged my life that anything God cannot give me let no man claim he can give me no sir no sir if God cannot lift this ministry I will be a liar 
together with any other person who joins me to believe no he said which of you by worrying can add one cubit one cubit one strand of hair is God blessing us everybody say God is almighty, God is almighty. in my life say it again God is almighty in my life lift your voice in one minute and say Lord I permit you to show your might I'm tired of doubting you I'm restraining your hand I'm restraining your hand uh, there is more that you can do there is more There is more that you can do. I have restrained your hand through my unbelief. They limited God by saying, Can God, can God, can God bless me in Zaria? Can He bless me in Zaria? Where are the helpers? No. The God I serve is dependable. Dependable, dependable, hey, dependable God. Dependable, dependable God. The reliable God. Reliable, reliable God. Reliable, reliable God. Reliable, reliable God. sit down but in one minute I want you to look at the mountain that has threatened God in your life and I want you to prophesy say my God can handle you lift your voice and pray say it. my God can handle you I may not have what it takes but my God can handle you no my God can handle you pray my God can handle you the shame and I may not be able to do anything about it, but my God can handle you. The stagnation and delay, the lack of results and lack of progress, my God can handle you. I do not fear, my God can handle you. You know that song, Sam? In this place. Sing that song for us. Let your power flow.
Please sit down. Psalms 147 verse 5. Quickly. I'm shaking unbelief in your life. Shaking unbelief in your life. God is a mighty God. He's the almighty. Not an almighty. The almighty. No options. No one above him. No one above him. Thank you, Sam. He says, great is our Lord and of great what power then he says his understanding this is the mystery behind his power his understanding is infinite now when you meet such a man never leave him his understanding is infinite great is our lord and of great power he says his understanding his comprehension is infinite I trust him. I believe him. You know, we when Ogun we came in, um, left this morning, and um, while I just passed the whole Lagos about an expressway down, I kept seeing different camps, prayer camps belonging to different ministries, and I thought for a while. One day, all of them were in their rooms, and God came to them and said, "I will make you great. Do you believe me?" And they were stupid enough to say yes some could not speak english but they said yes mm. had no connection some no education but they said yes it is when the results happen people start admiring you no the mission is follow me if you can have that rugged faith to follow him you will return with a testimony please I want you to burn this every time challenges overwhelm you every time you come to a point where you don't know what to do meditate on the might the might of God I like angel Michael when they started fighting with Lucifer over the body of Moses this is what he said he said I will not bring any railing accusation against you but this is my verdict the Lord I invoke a power greater than me the Lord rebuke you You've been trying to fight many battles on your own it will soon kill you there are some battles that will eat you up on your own there are many young men trying to fight the battle of finances by themselves i'm brilliant i'm not daft you will soon die the 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 reality of the economy will swallow you up you better humble yourself and say lord lead me i'm not ashamed to declare that i do not know if you don't lead me the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5. 6 says, and lean not on your own understanding. Right? It says, in all your ways, verse 6 now, acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. 7 says, be not wise in your own eyes. It says, fear the Lord and turn away, depart. All this, do you know why many people don't trust God? This macho man, bold face thing that they want to do to life listen it's good to be bold but we make our boast in the lord when you remove him out of the question you are boasting and you must defend yourself indeed we make our boast all day long the psalmist says your confidence in life is not just because of your intellectual capacity your confidence in life is not just because you think you went to school go and find out how many graduates are moving around as if they are holding a tissue paper your confidence in life is not because you think you can speak English. Your confidence is not because you think you look good. <sighs> there is one mighty, strong, strong, mighty. You threaten me, he will answer you. Mm. You will hear my voice in that equation. He will echo. And when God speaks everything, if you speak to me, it's only me that will respond to you. But when God speaks, everything will answer. Everything. Please tap into this understanding. I'm giving you spiritual intelligence. Don't ever say they are basic. Leave God out of your life and watch the way the enemy will eat you. Leave the understanding of the almightiness of God and show me how you will ever build a house show me how you will ever build a ministry show me how you will ever build a business it will it will so shock you take God away that is a, a, a mountain that cannot be surmounted 
but bring him into the equation and he will cause it to tremble before you now the thing is men don't see him they see only you so they think you are the one doing it alone it's up to you to be smart enough to keep his presence by being an usher and pointing men back to him and say look i know you saw only one person walking but we are two and actually i'm only the second of the two not the first there is one in front of me i am a product of his wisdom i am a product of his leadership there is this treasure he says in earthen vessels that the excellency of power might be of god not of the vessel please repent from this unnecessary vain confidence in yourself i will do this i am smart the way i'm anointed is impossible for me to not have an anointed ministry you are joking go and find out how many people see jesus almost every day and don't have up to 10 people in their church it's not because they are going to hell if it does not give you these keys he says a man can receive nothing except it is given if it is not given to you you can't have it it's impossible what an awesome God you are you're an awesome awesome God what an awesome God you are you're an awesome number three ready the third key man will always have a role to play man will always have a role to play in fulfilling God's word in his life man will always have a role to play I'm giving you spiritual intelligence so you don't waste your time asking why things are not happening man will always have a role to play someone is being delivered already from this statement your role is not taking the place of prophecy but it controls manifestation between thus saith the Lord and it came to pass you have a role Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2 man will always always the love of God is unconditional but his blessings are conditional the love of God is unconditional but his blessings are conditional Here's what it says, and it shall come to pass if thou shalt, uh -huh, listen, diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, pay attention. Then number two, to do all his commandments which I commanded this day, that the Lord thy God will do what? Set thee on high above all nations of the earth, verse two, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee what's the condition if thou shall hearken verse 2 just stop there if thou shall hearken to the voice of the lord thy god he didn't say if god speaks he will set you on top as powerful as his voice is it requires a partnership are we together how many believers sit down there is a very sad statement that is used especially around the north that's to mean it was so prepared by god no i believe in the sovereignty of god there are things that are written there is how god can veto in a man's life but it is not in his character to veto over everything are we together so if i'm poor it's the will of god if the ministry refuses to grow is the will of god no 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 the will of god is not hidden he has made known unto us the mystery of his will 
is clear I know the thoughts that I think towards you Jeremiah 29 11 thoughts of peace and not of evil not of evil not of evil not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end that means if my life is not bringing me a future and an expected end I know that something is wrong I can't sit down stupidly say no this this has to be God no 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 I know his ways it's not a mystery I know there are challenges I know there is a fullness of affliction I know there are seasons but I also know that the times are in the hands of God he said until the word of the Lord came to him the word of the Lord tried him right but when that word came he prevailed over it in the dealings of God with man you don't suffer forever no sir understand the ways of God so that you don't sit down giving God thanks over things you should be rebuking hallelujah if the membership of koinonia begins to reduce I won't sit down and say it's the will of God he's driving wrong people that's nonsense we know that there is a spirit destroying men because it is the will of God that all men might be saved all men there's no such thing as the crowd does not matter it does the ministry of the kingdom is a ministry of multitudes when you understand your partnership you will know what is demonic you will know what is a process you will know what to give thanks for and what to cast and bind there are too many believers who just sit down and say whatever will be will be unfortunately it's what you don't like that will be are we together everybody hates me they are not nice to me say well maybe that's how my life is it will continue like that you have not sat down to say could there be the manifestation of an evil spirit in my life that is bringing this rain of bad luck I'm such a nice personality but why is it that people cannot help me when you begin to probe and look at things then the Lord will show you your own role and say this is what you have neglected this do and you will see the hand of God everyone say I have a role say it loud I have a role to play in the fulfillment of God's word over my life and destiny say it again I have a role to play in the fulfillment of God's word over my life and destiny say it one last time I always have a role to play in the fulfillment of God's word over my life and destiny never allow anybody listen never allow anybody indoctrinate you into believing you will sit down and cross your leg and things will happen no sir even science refuses that even science refuses that nothing moves by itself right yeah the first law of mechanics science people a body remains in a state of uniform motion or a static state till an external force acts upon it otherwise meaning if I live this year and there is no force acting it will remain there forever your destiny is like this object it will remain in one place the day God wants to change I know my God he will arise you know your God but you will not arise you provoke his hand to arise for you God will deliver me you people should just keep watching no there is what you must do good master what shall I do to be saved that's why the man was rich what shall I do he knew he had a role to play not all God save me that's what the other guy said on the cross we are here it's true we are thieves but what did you even say and Jesus looked at him the other one said look we are seen as Lord we take responsibility say you you will be with me this day in paradise the other guy still on the cross as a thief and a criminal was not repentant I'm somebody who is obsessed with a sense of responsibility I I detest irresponsibility of any kind especially spiritual irresponsibility if my life will rise is up to God in partnership with my cooperation still on this point I want you to write this down are you getting blessed tonight 
just listen to what I'm telling you and you'll be surprised to see how your life will change write this down still on that point three your path will have to be based on knowledge and understanding your path will have to be based on knowledge and understanding in as much as it is important to take action that action must be based on knowledge and understanding not emotions not suggestions not guessing you see the thing about god is he clarifies what role you have to play moses stretch forth your rod it is a moses just do whatever you want to do i'm just there no stretch forth your rod jericho joshua tell the people to go around jericho specific instruction once every one of the six days and on the seventh day they go seven times after that together with the priest they raise a shout specific role proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 we we'll look at two scriptures so many people are attempting to cooperate with god but they are doing it in ignorance now when you when you walk in ignorance you alienate yourself from the possibilities that are that are contained in god proverbs 4 verse 7 let's look at it proverbs 4 verse 7 let's turn it from here for time's sake proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7 it says wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom then it says and with all thy getting do what get understanding wisdom tells you what to do understanding tells you how to do it wisdom tells you to cook understanding tells you how to combine the ingredients wisdom tells you you have a great destiny understanding tells you the path to take that's why he says thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path there are similar roles but they are not the same a light to your path direction a lamp to your feet guidance a light to your path direction listen if you come and you're looking for direction i'll tell you okay go left you're going to see two roads follow the left one turn that's direction but when i tell you let's walk together and we get to a place i say okay move with me that's guidance the word of god both guides and directs thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path so god shows you where to go and guides you on how to go there make sure that you understand what to do before you start doing it don't just say wow this tight let okay since prosperity is tied to tithing and all of that let me just tight you may be taking the action but is it based on knowledge and understanding you can frown your face and come and squeeze an envelope and stand as if you are going to stone god with money and drop it in the offering basket as though you are bribing a man and go back and find out that your heaven still remain closed because it is not the substance it is the understanding the insight is what gives life to the action are you seeing that now yeah so you are praying for the sick and you are saying in the name of jesus be healed but you think it's just about speaking so you are saying be healed be healed be healed and the person is not being healed you are still mentioning the name of jesus in the name of jesus be healed be anointed the power of god will touch people right now everybody you ask them to shout everything i receive shout jesus shout fire shout water shout and everybody is just looking at you like a rock i tell you people are such a bunch of unbelievers here you are you are trying to insult the grace of god on my life then you start making reference to meetings that's what people do when they don't have result is it not you that came in 1991 remember that meeting <laughs> bible says jesus the same yesterday today and forever don't bring jesus of yesterday for us we want to see the jesus of today alive and strong but that's what happens to people let your action be based on knowledge knowledge okay what is the revelation behind tithing why does tithing open the heavens wow tithing is my spiritual circumcision 
Tithing is my proof of obedience. Tithing is not a proof of love. Giving is a proof of love. Tithing is a proof of obedience. Tithing does not mean you love God. Tithing just means you are obedient. Because an exact figure was given to you. So I begin to study it. I see those who gave their tithe and the results that followed and then light breaks out. And now I package my tithe with understanding. So I come and while I'm singing, I'm in the worship team and I'm trusting that every time I lift up my voice, people get blessed. I know that it's not just a nice voice and beautiful melodies. I go and begin to study. What is it about music and worship? And I begin to find out, ah, this is how it works. Now, on the strength of that understanding, when I lift a song, I'm lifting that song from an understanding. That understanding will allow a dimension of the grace of God to flow through that song. And you find out that people become a reflection of your understanding. Never do things because people are doing it. Spend time to seek knowledge and understanding. Then you take an enlightened step. Take an enlightened step. Everybody is doing business to prosper. You too, you go and do it. No. What is the purpose of it? Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. The Bible talks about those who are alienated. Alienated from the life of God through ignorance alienated from the life of God through ignorance through ignorance through ignorance are we together yeah there are people who although they are supposed to be working in certain realities they exempted themselves through ignorance being alienated from the life of God and the Bible says through ignorance I am always passionate about a revelation of the areas where I do not know. I'm not too proud to learn. I always want to know what am I doing wrongly. What, when I find knowledge that is relevant to me, I jump at it with all my heart. I know you have been taking action, but is it based on insight? Is it based on revelation? You saw people anointing themselves. You went to go and buy Goya oil. And you brought it and all of a sudden you opened a bottle and drank small rub small on your head rub small on your hand went to sleep and a spirit sat on you 10 minutes later and he said my god with this oil yes with the oil you carried your bible and put it under your bed and while you slept you had the worst dream even the day you slept watching a film you had a good dream but now you put your bible because it's not in actions revelation there are too many people who don't pay attention to revelation revelation Ephesians 1 17 Paul speaking says for this cause I Paul bow my knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him your eyes being enlightened or flooded with light that you may know come into a comprehension come into an understanding of a reality it is important for us to know I like it to say in the name of Jesus Lord take away ignorance from my life say it again take away ignorance you know let me tell you something the little understanding that God has given me about certain kingdom realities the mysteries of the kingdom I watch how people break these laws every day and want to succeed and want to do well i watch pastors break the laws that bring success in ministry i watch business people break the laws that bring success in business i watch leaders break the laws that bring uncommon results i watch people who want the anointing break almost every law that brings it you see enlightenment is very powerful because when you are moving in darkness you don't even know and so you keep trying this is not working but I fasted 30 days I thought at the end of 30 days an angel will appear to me and say from this day I give you a mantle receive it you collect it and, and nothing happens and yet you see how effortless 
certain people move in the grace and the power of God as though God owes them his presence and power you've got to find out it's not just in saying the power of God is moving it's not just in saying this and that and that no as I passed Lagos about an expressway today I saw the predictability of the results of the people you know most of those fathers of faith came from the same background the same background the apostolic church Aladura CAC that background regardless of what they have now so certain foundational things were functional regardless of what the ministry is crowds space they caught a revelation of space they don't buy small things they buy kilometers not plots and expand it i've had the privilege to see photos of some of these ministries in some nations that are racist nations yet they gave them land it's a grace now they may not have as much revelation as you do but sadly they have more results which do you prefer the end of everything brothers and sisters is results herein is my father glorified that you bear much fruit not that you learn about plants that you bear much fruit you can learn all you can about plants but if you cannot bear fruit you are not glorifying the father your action must be based on light and that means you must contend for light let me tell you how i study i write out the areas of my life where i have seen some measure of result and i celebrate and thank god then i write out the areas in my life where i'm trusting god for results or greater results and then i begin to study from the word of god and secondly from the life of those who have commendably produced results in that area that's how you get results that's how you get results I'm not going to study somebody who is not working in the anointing if I want to work in the anointing. I will love the person. I will respect the part, the fact that he is part of the body. But he has nothing to teach me about the anointing. It's not working in his life. So I will find somebody who represents the hand of God to the degree to which I desire. And humbly study to the degree to which I desire. There may be many of them, but I must find the one that reflects my expectation. Then I study follow them the bible says who through faith and patience obtain not are obtaining they have obtained the promise hallelujah run away from ignorance run away from it start acting blindly don't just act emotionally the moment you panic blood of jesus holy ghost fire honestly holy ghost fire in these demons you are hearing holy ghost you don't know what the fire of the holy ghost does you don't even know whether it exists you don't even know whether the blood of jesus is there and what it should have so you are just praying holy ghost fire holy ghost fire blood of jesus it will never i, I refuse to believe it then you start crying even you you know you didn't believe what you said because at the end you just start stop praying and say god is this how you leave me May people of confidence arise who know you see when you are walking by light you will not stop regardless of the result because you know the result will show it's like driving right when you are driving somewhere you don't get tired after five minutes and say we've not reached let me park this car you keep moving why because you know you will get there when people start practicing certain things and stop it is because they don't have a revelation that that is the key for every door there is a key you have a bunch of keys in your hands the bible calls them the keys of the kingdom you have to painstakingly find out which one opens which door i can have a bunch of keys in my hands that does not mean the doors will open how many of you have different doors in your homes that have different keys you can see one small and then another one big the keys don't replace themselves you have to know which one there are certain padlocks you open them in a very interesting way there are others you can close your eyes and just chuck it and turn and it opens all in the same house so there are things you can just come and effortlessly solve but there are others you have to look at it with the eyes of the spirit ah this is what i do this is what i do and i get results in the name of jesus christ i pray for you 
may the days of shadow boxing come to an end in your life efforts that are not done out of knowledge efforts that are not done out of out of accuracy you will begin to be circumspect and every action of yours will start producing strange results in the name of Jesus Christ let's take two more and then we'll pray is God speaking to you thank you Jesus number what number four evil still exists write it down evil the reality of darkness the depravity the existence of wickedness the existence of darkness is a revelation that you must comprehend if you want to walk in victory walk in triumph and have spiritual intelligence listen it is not only weakness it is foolishness to ignore the presence of evil evil still exists first john chapter 5 verse 19 let's turn there write it down and turn there. first john 5 19 jesus thank you can you play the guitar too for me binga just follow him and play god wants to do something in this place first john 5 19 it says and we know that we are of god and then it says apologies for the projection issues i'll just read from here you listen to me carefully and we know that we are of god then it says and the whole world lieth it didn't say receives visitation the world is lying like you say this pulpit is lying on a a rug a carpet then it says the whole world lieth where in wickedness listen i want to give you spiritual intelligence the condition to be a victim of any attack from the devil is that you are born not that you do anything wrong or right the moment you find yourself on this side of god's kingdom immediately there is a contention every human being on earth is a potential battle axe satan will not wait till you become one he starts attacking you from birth he knows that everyone born of a woman carries the potential to be used by god are we together yeah apostle what have i done who did i offend have you heard that that culture driven terminology God, this one that demons are against me nothing works in my life i didn't offend anybody you don't have to there is a story that predates your existence listen to the teaching pulling down strongholds and a number of other teachings warfare series i teach there very extensively on the reality of wickedness many of us trivialize it until it attacks you no the Bible says, woe to them who are at ease in Zion. Scripture clearly tells us that this world, living is a warfare. Living is a warfare. I think it's Dr. Paul Enenche who says that the world is a battlefield, not a playing ground. It's a real battlefield. Just start getting blessed and watch people hate you for doing nothing. You are trying to show you have money. Who did you offend? nobody lie down and sleep and let someone not be able to sleep he wakes up and is angry why are you sleeping this is the world we live in you have a neighbor who looks at you and sees you dancing giving glory to god and he says all these arrogant people i will deal with you that begins attacks in your life please listen to me i'm sharing with, i'm giving you spiritual intelligence I have factored in my life that every day of my life until Jesus comes 
somebody somewhere hates me enough to want to see me dead somebody somewhere hates me enough to go so only god knows how many people are in a herbal shrine now calling my name while i'm sleeping only god knows how many people are saying let him have a plane crash this year let him have a car accident this year so that all the mouth is making about the word of god so that people will be discouraged the problem is never the enemies the problem is you but to ignore their presence is a joke the psalmist listen judas one who was close to jesus used a kiss a kiss is supposed to be a good thing a sign of love but to someone it was a sign destroy him brothers and sisters hear me i don't mean to insult your civilization but i'm sorry to inform you that witchcraft is real say it after me witchcraft is in everyone's village here everyone is in the city is in zaria somebody somewhere is looking for blood and they are hoping that your own will be the one they are finding <laughs> you better grow up fast enough to believe what i'm telling you the whole world lieth in wickedness a man goes out in the morning and returns back with a sack letter that was the happiest day of his life but he returned back ask joe Job was minding his business and consultations were happening in the heavenlies and all of a sudden everything began to fail in his life brothers and sisters i can look at a life and know that this life is under attack i have seen marriages under attack all of a sudden love dries up between the husband and wife for no reason the man is angry with the wife you ask him many times i counsel them i say sir what exactly did your wife do he said apostle i can't tell you this is exactly what she has done but i'm tired of this woman i have to look for another one then you know that hell is breaking loose madam why do you hate this man i'm tired i've not enjoyed my marriage from the day we've been married for 17 years not one day of joy madam you didn't laugh on your wedding day not one day of joy not one day of joy <laughs> Yet you see videos of happy moments when they dance together. Not one day of joy. And she's planning to leave that guy. By Jesus, for sure. A man prays for the arrival of a child. And have you seen people who look at their children and regret that they were married? Not because the child did anything. From the day this child came, our finance doesn't stay again. What sort of a child is this? I don't need a word of knowledge to know that your life is under attack all I need to know is did you say yes to the Lord Jesus Christ do you mean business about your destiny then your life is a project for darkness how can we make the Word of God fail in pastor Alpha's life how can we make promise not become that thing how can we frustrate the purposes of God upon Benga's life that's the devil for you let me tell you something with satan he's a patient fellow don't take his patience as foolishness he can be patient and wait for 20 years until the ministry expands enough for you to not pray again then he comes just like he said he would and destroy your life are we together there are many of us right now i know your life is under attack by your prayer life I see it you don't need a word of knowledge I know your life is under attack by the bitterness things you never would conceive before are now at work in you I see the anger and the resentment you hate everybody for no cause it's not you Peter Peter Satan desire to sift you like wheat but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen thy brethren I look at a man and know his life is under attack all doors of finance is closed then four children become sick in one day he's coming the thief cometh not but to steal you always see his signature when he comes he leaves the traces a family that were once happy all of a sudden 
from nowhere you will see the lady will just come with one kind of trouble somewhere the guy will come with one kind of trouble somewhere the guy will start smoking he will come and speak to his father and say from today i'm a man you talk to me i slap you just when he's doing that they sack him from work just when he's doing that something happens his car packs out brothers and sisters it is not a test it is oppression hallelujah all of a sudden mysteriously people start dying within a region have you seen that happen just like in three weeks or one month men fathers of people just go away mothers of people just go away brothers and sisters just go away just like that five people lose their jobs within two weeks in your house don't tell me it's not an attack someone promises you i will give you a job even says complete everything you travel around the last stage someone just wants to sign and say what did you say your name is again femi me i said i will help you call this person for me did i say this guy was part of them you say sir we even drank minerals that day say look i can't remember drinking any minerals leave this place i have seen witchcraft life in the lives of people I have seen families under attack no one rises you rise beyond certain limits the devil will not stop you but one day something happens and it crashes you there are ministries within certain regions that don't reach three years Zaria is one of those places the lifespan of any ministerial impact in this city is three years after three years a scandal must arise or something must arise and destroy you if you survive three years you are truly anointed you see it happen a musician comes into the city they are inviting him to every church they exhaust your grace in two months and dump you they are looking for the next person there is such evil like that there are men of God like that there are seasons where they are relevant for one year two years they are the talk of the town almost every church invites them after that you see them walk upon the street there are names in this nation and around the world i cannot even begin to mention people who were inspirations when you mention them they represented certain dimensions now they are as silent as a dead body wickedness is real evil is real one of us here showed me the picture of his father i think it was last week and i saw the man's legs like half of the leg you could see the bones sorry for painting a graphic picture no flesh it had eaten what happened to the man he was sleeping you know went to bed at night and all of a sudden someone fired an arrow to the leg he saw it and woke up just a slight pain a slight pain started eating up when i saw the picture it was irritating I said this is your father's leg just imagine dividing my leg by half imagine the toes knees you are seeing the bones that's somebody's leg alive today hiv people who receive their hiv not by a bad living but from dreams are you aware do you know when the enemy rises against you do you have the discernment to know or you just sit down and say we are all like that it's just nigeria you know i've shared with you a, a story I'll, I'll, I'll share it here one time i was praying i think i was in a fast and then i was praying and i've shared it here a number of times my the, the ceiling just disappeared like disappeared like that and all of a sudden i saw a big creature big like as tall as this from here up the eyes alone were like the head like my head imagine two of my head that's the eyes and then the tail was like a snake imagine another animal joined to another animal the tail had life of itself it could detach and live its life independently you know how you caught a worm and then the parts are, are, are acting that's how it was and then he looked at me with fierce anger and this is what he told me he said so you think you can bring the people of god into abundance 
that was a conversation red fiery eyes and after that the vision disappeared you think the devil is happy every time you are being transported you think the devil is happy every time you are being delivered you think the devil is happy every time you are being saved being healed you think the devil is happy with this information you are receiving that your life is being changed you think the devil is happy that now you have been taught not to cry at challenges in times of famine you should dance and rejoice you think satan is happy with that mystery so imagine how much he would try to come against me let's do something to this man imagine how he would try to come against koinonia let's do something against koinonia who is like him the lion and the lamb seated on the throne mountains bow down every ocean roll to the lord of lords who is like him the lion and the lamb seated on the throne mountains bow When you find out that there is a pattern of pain and tragedy, I want you to know that hell is about to break its bank over you. And that is the time to arise. Before the throne, there is the cross. And you must know how to fight your way to victory. This is where spiritual laziness has cheated many of us. This is where the ministry of prayer has been absent in our lives the ministry of engaging the world for victory too much carelessness and people never rise they die at the cross there they die in the grave and there is no resurrection for them hallelujah when everything in your life goes haywire please hear me i understand that here and there one aspect of your life you may be trusting god but when every area of your life is zero if you have been finding out whether it's the devil, I answer your prayer now. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I know his signature. Everything cannot go wrong at once. Something is wrong somewhere. And so it is important you acknowledge it. And then you lock your door and find out what is the mystery of deliverance. Not what is the mystery of prosperity. What? Why am I not getting a job? No job. No money no favor no open doors no anointing no breakthrough no helpers you are under attack don't wait until it kills you you finish treating yourself now two weeks later it comes back i guarantee you you are under attack the moment stomach pain is getting healed your eye starts as you are taking the last drug for eye your ear starts all of a sudden you hit your leg you're on your way going to your room that little hitting for two weeks there is no balm that cures it that was not a stone that was more than a stone i remember one day i was praying and i was praying for someone a particular person in this ministry and then when i was praying the lord led me to pray for that person and immediately i was praying you know how you blow somebody on your back physically like i stand behind you and blow that was what i felt physically when i started praying for the person do you know sincerely speaking i had to kneel down and lay my hands the pain was too much and i knew that person's life was under attack ah i said my god you have to arise and help this one i laid hands there no praise and worship let me tell you this there are prayers that prevail there are different kinds of tongues there are tongues for warfare it's not the tongues for just edifying your spirit man you too you know it will change believe me it's because you don't pray that's why you will never get there just speak anything and even you you know it didn't rise shalakataya the day you lock your door, I'm telling you this, I'm telling you this, you lock your door and say, I'm not going out until there is a change. 
and blasting tongues the spirit of god you will feel your tongues changing you will know this is warfare prayer you may not know what you are saying your mind is not fruitful but at a point your spirit the anger of your situation is added to your prayer you are not laughing praying nonsense you are thinking of who is calling no you are praying because you know that you are breaking through and at a point joy mm -hmm, one of the signs of the manifestation of the kingdom joy comes to you and for reasons you cannot explain you know that victory has been wrought peace comes to you he gives you a sign i tell you when you get that sign start dancing no power hear me this is how i live my life when i pray listen let me teach you some hold on please when i pray i don't stop until that joy comes i don't do all this i'm praying for 30 minutes one hour if it is in five minutes the joy comes that's when i stop pray you hold the universe you hold every one of us listen there are people here the moment a man appears in your life those spirits arise the lifespan of that relationship it will not pass two months no matter how vicious you are you thought it was just because you were bad no the best people in your family have gone through the same thing please listen to what i'm telling you i'm giving you keys that will give you victory evil is real hear me if you see crowds like this gathered inside and outside by the grace of god brothers and sisters victory was commanded in the realm of the spirit it didn't just happen you sit down there and allow satan to keep blackmailing what you represent every time you want to bless people people say don't trust benga i'm still suspecting him don't you know there are spirits that plant deception you blast them out in prayer someone wants to marry you all of a sudden a stranger arises she does not know she's under the influence of a demon this lady did a and b and c last year no sir the moment he wants to bless you he wants to do business with you and a night before signing the contract what million somebody calls him and say who did i hear you are doing business with be careful you see that let me tell you there are spirits i told you life is spiritual you keep watching things happen in your life you will never rise beyond some levels there are some of you the moment you hold money finances everything will go haywire till it finishes when it finishes everything dies by itself it's an attack it's an attack There are times some of you have received calls from me even in the night you were sleeping and you just had me call you and i say where are you what are you doing oh apostle i'm in this and that and that all right let's pray some of you have, have received calls i just call you I, sometimes i don't even know you you don't ask how i got your phone number i just call you and i say let's pray in the name of jesus a and b i see the numbers in dreams and the lord says call this person there is an attack over their family I just call you and off the phone you don't even know what happens some of you when the devil is about to buffet you the Lord uses my face in your dreams here he comes shows up I tell you if you see me in your dreams start dancing I'm not a herbalist believe me it's a mystery God used the voice of Eli to speak to Samuel God uses a grace you honor that represents a ranking that can solve your problem. So when he shows up, he shows up with his covenant of possibilities. It's not Joshua Selman. It's the lamb, the lamb himself, using the face of his servant. Listen, don't mind people who preach nonsense around. Say men of God use charm and herbalism to mind. Do it if it's easy to, to make charm. There are men of God I have prayed to command certain miracles in this ministry. And while I went to sleep, certain faces that I respect with respect to the dimension of the desire. Here they come, they walk up. Just like I come to you too. They come and sometimes they just speak a word. Sometimes they lay hands. When you get up, don't just laugh. 
you get up and receive it this is where you miss it you just get up and say i saw apostle and you are smiling you miss your miracle that's the time to dance shada kata is done is over is done is over is done is over listen before this ministry entered a supernatural dimension of prosperity i remember i was sitting i've been praying and practicing this principle but i knew that it, it's like there was a resistance a resistance and that night i prayed my heart out as i was sleeping all of a sudden i was preaching somewhere in canaan land and bishop oyeriko was sitting down david Ipiome was sitting down close to him two men i respect their voice when it comes to the aspect of kingdom wealth territorial wealth and they were watching me just like supervising a student on project i was standing on the stage i could not stand very well it was shaking and afterwards i came and oyeriko asked me to empty everything in my pocket on his feet when i dropped it he said no there's still some more i put my hand i dropped everything and he laid hands on me somebody took me to a room i opened the room and i saw dollars i saw pounds i saw naira that was the beginning when that happened koinonia exploded like a charm there are mysteries you don't have spiritual intelligence you will never rise never rise some of you were this close to your breakthrough but you did not know what you saw you thought you had a dream only if you dance for 10 minutes that would have been the end of that problem but you did not know help those under the anointing you will this year I was praying and all of a sudden I was caught up in a vision and then when I was caught up in a vision the second time I would see Papa Adeboe in an encounter not a dream not lying down to dream the first one it was a pastor's conference and then they were serving food in a tray and I was sitting and he pointed me he said come and then I came, I saw pastors looking at me with anger and envy. And he said, sit down here, let's eat. I said, I can never do this. I've been trained to respect. He said, I said, sit down and let's eat. Two of us sat on the ground and we were eating. When I got up then, January, this one happened like 10 years ago. January this year, when God declared that it's a year of triumph, I had that encounter again. He finished doing something and then I came to him. And I can't remember what happened. And then he, I, I, have the, I have it written down. And he looked at me and said, okay, I'm going to pray for you. And he started praying and he was laying hands and he was singing a song in Yoruba. Quietly, just laid hands on me and he was singing a song. And then when he finished singing, he says, now, I open up the gates. You know how he's just talking. I open up the gates of influence to you walk in it and he told me Baba I like you tell somebody in Yoruba go you can go I've opened the road brothers and sisters this is how this is what we call encounters you don't know it how many encounters have you had and you missed it because if it is not perfected in the realm of the spirit the same way you call somebody and shoot an arrow in the spirit and leave him quietly then in the physical Two weeks, he's still moving alive, but he's dead. He doesn't even know he's dead. You see him and greet him. How are you? He said, in two weeks, it's my birthday. And you laugh at him. You killed him two weeks ago. Yet he's still walking. And one day, anything can kill him because he's already dead. Anything. That's the same way when you are blessed in the spirit. Anything can prosper you. It's not about what you do. It's about something that has entered you already. You are the universe. You are shed it in on 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 on
there are only three ways witchcraft operates i will be teaching you next week and then i will teach you the last point on how to command victory but someone has learned something tonight you have been wasting breakthroughs you finish koinonia and sleep you finish your prayer and sleep and things happen in the realm of the spirit you get up and you don't permit them to happen in this realm don't you know a man must speak for things to manifest you saw your marriage but you got up and you were shy you were embarrassed and you just laughed and said ah don't mock me i'm not talking of all these demonic things where you are moving around no listen it's not every encounter in the spirit that is demonic some things god is telling you the season has come especially when it's it is emphasized two is the number of emphasis three is a shorty is a witness that god has decreed that it should happen but it never happens never happens because there is no spiritual intelligence i don't waste opportunities in my life the greatest of my battles are fought in the realm of the spirit the realm of the spirit the realm of the spirit that's what happens you've not commanded victory in the realm of the spirit you are pasting posters everywhere come for my meeting you are just wasting your money for nothing believe me the victory miracle service is always finished before friday koinonia is always finished before friday you don't come and finish koinonia here it's risky risky you don't come for miracle service and stand on stage and say it's time to be healed foolishness that's not it doesn't happen that way from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain then it was possible for him to be slain physically if he were not slain in the realm of the spirit he couldn't be, be, be saved physically it always happens first in the realm of the spirit we're going to pray we're going to pray i i feel i feel i feel the air of some warfare prayers we, we, i i just sense in my spirit that we need to pray some warfare prayers listen in the next five minutes i know our time is up but in the next five minutes i release my faith with you and i want us to pray we're going to force doors to open you are not praying to edify your spirit no every pending breakthrough it has been declared it's my season of trial i have seen it in dreams the lord has confirmed it i should be blessed i'm not asking i know it it is a season Pray, pray, Koinonia. It's the season of encounter with the anointing. I cannot remain at this level of grace. There is a dimension. I have seen it. He gave me a witness. He gave me a witness. It's my season of breakthrough. It will not happen like before. Now I have intelligence. I will not waste the dreams. I will not waste the visions. I now understand. I now discern. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the beaters crown. You are the God.
Listen, listen. We are praying. There are miracles. There are miracles that should have happened. Stop asking whether it's the will of God. You are going to pray and say, Lord, I allow them to manifest. I partner with you now. I've seen it in my dreams. I saw it in the visions of God. Lift your voice and pray. Come on. Pray. The visions of wealth. I have seen it. The visions of riches. I call you for The visions of riches. The visions of of Listen, listen, very quickly, two more prayer points and we're done. The Bible says, withhold not good from thy brother when it is within thy power to do it. Say not to him, come today, come tomorrow. God has it now. Did you hear what I said? Now. I want you to lift your voice and say, now break through. Now break through. Now break through. Not next week. No. Not next miracle service. Now favor. Now favor. Now break through. Come on, Colonia. Let God do Now anoint it. It's not a negotiation. You have declared it's my year of trial. I stop bad news. Lift your voice and stop it. Lift your voice and stop it. Tired of bad news. Tired of disappointment. I stop it. I stop it. Have respect, oh God, to the covenant. I stop bad news.
Listen, never let anything to chance in your life. You will be so disappointed. Never let anything to chance. This is a word for someone. Never let anything to chance. If anything will happen, you will make it happen. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. If you have never believed a prophetic word for any year, believe it now. Believe it now. Thanks be to God who causes us always, always to triumph. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Every vision you have seen that represents what God wants to happen in your life now, and was hijacked by any power in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God I command the expectation of God for you as revealed to you I command it to manifest now I command it to manifest now command it to manifest now hear me any human agent that partnered with darkness to hijack any aspect of your destiny let the fire of vengeance you see we've been praying vengeance here in the last two weeks just follow what God is doing I command it that has stolen anything from your life from your family brought you disaster may the God of vengeance arise in judgment this night may the God of vengeance arise in judgment this night whoever will not let you go must go for you whoever will not let your destiny go must go for you I release vengeance the fire of vengeance the fire of vengeance the fire of vengeance the fire of vengeance I decree and declare every power that closed your means of breakthrough in the name of Jesus I declare tonight let there be a warfare in the heavenlies we deploy angels we deploy angels the angels of God we declare are they not ministering spirits sent to minister to the heirs of salvation angels we release you war a good warfare release destinies release lives release favor release breakthrough in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. I decree and declare whoever is behind God's schedule for him, God planned that by now there are some realms of anointing you should have entered, some realms of breakthrough. Anyone behind schedule here, I want to push you by prophecy. So take a Pay attention. 
attention. There is a grace for speed. I decree it in the name of Jesus upon everyone here behind Shadul. In the name of Jesus, I command you, catch up now. Catch up now. Financially, catch up now. Spiritually, catch up now. Anyone called Barry, anyone the devil has vowed that will not marry, anyone the devil has vowed to always have disappointment, I prophesy again, catch up now. Catch up now. Listen, I don't know the chains that held your legs, but in the name of Jesus, by the fire that Elijah commanded from heaven, I decree and declare, may those chains break now. May those chains break now. May those chains break now. I pray for you, this night as you sleep, may my God show you a sign. God is a God of signs. God is a God of signs. My God, show your people signs. Signs of their victory. Signs of their breakthrough. This is how to receive your portion. Anything less than this, you are playing games. This is how you receive what belongs to you. The devil will not give it willingly. No. The first message that was preached after the resurrection of Christ is that men and brethren, what shall we do? And this is what the apostle said. Repent for the remission of your sins. So the Bible says he gave his only begotten son. You laid aside your majesty. You gave up everything for me. You suffered at the hands. Of those you have created, you took all of my guilt and shame when you died and rose again. Now, today, in heaven, if you know it, just sing it with me. I really want to worship you, my God. You have won my heart and I am yours forever and ever. I will love you. You are the only one that for me gave your life. Like you give your ATM for someone to use and withdraw money. He gave, he donated. And Jesus came upon the earth and he began to do many great things. Listen, Jesus did not just come, please, I want you to pay attention. It's going to be very brief and we'll begin to pray. Jesus did not just come to show us how God looked alone. He came to show us how we should look. So when he walked upon the earth, he was the prototype of God's idea of the man he had created. He was invincible, the Bible records. Above situations, above circumstance, with unlimited power, yet a man of extreme self-control. He knew when to speak and he knew when to keep quiet. There would be so many sick people, like the ten lepers. He would heal one and just walk away. Because his desire was not to show power. His desire was to do the will of the Father. He was more interested in bringing satisfaction to his Father than building a ministry.
people tried to say, look, build a ministry. And he said, no, 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 no. no. I can of my own do nothing as I see my father do. So he came to show us the prototype of the true Christian life. A life that is completely yielded to the will of the father. Void of self-ambition. Void of a desire for vain glory and personal gratification outside of Christ. A life that is crucified with Christ. Are we together now? And then the Bible begins to describe to us that which happened today many years ago. We know it as the passion of the Christ. It started from the communion where they came into him by covenant so that they would authorize him. John chapter 6 says, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you cannot be part of me. You cannot have my life. So while they were taking the communion, they were giving him access to carry the sin of man upon himself. And then the Bible says he went to Gethsemane and there he cried. He prayed until tears were like drops of blood. Afterwards, he was ready to be crucified. And brothers and sisters, I know that we celebrate Easter. Today is Good Friday. Pain is what made today good. Are we together? Sacrifice is what made today good. If he refused to lay down his life. Listen, when Pilate looked at him and said, don't you know I have the power to free you? He said, ah, 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 ah. He said no man has this power except it is given unto him by my father. He said, I have the power to lay it down and the power to pick it up again. In other words, I was not coerced. My love for you made me to sacrifice my life, my reputation and everything. We talk a lot about Good Friday, but we never know what made it good. This is what made it good. That a man gave his son then the son gave his life. Are we together now? It's one thing to give your child. It's another thing for the child to agree. He can refuse. Jesus had the right to refuse. In fact, he was tempted to negotiate it. He said, Father, if it be possible, you are the all-wise God. There is another way you can do this thing. But then he remembered, nevertheless, I told you the hallmark of sonship is servanthood. The true proof that you are a son is that you can give up sonship to become a servant. Are we together now? The father gave Jesus. Jesus gave his life. And don't be confused. He gave his blood. He gave his righteousness. Are we together now? He gave up his position. And when he was doing that, he had you in mind. Listen, listen. He never went to the cross because of anything he did of himself. The Bible says he was a man touched with the feelings of our infirmity, yet without sin. But he took your place because the Bible says we all like sheep have gone astray. Right? He said every man has gone his own way. With our ideas about God, our ideas about success. Would you give our mother a chair, please? Let her just sit down. I'll minister to you in a moment, please. At least let her just sit down. Hallelujah. Well, all of you, you can sit down. I'll call you now. You're all looking at me. Um, sit down. Especially this, my friend. Friend, how are you? What's his name? Aaron. Kelvin. Just get somewhere. For, they can sit around. And I'll attend to you now. Just five minutes. Let me establish what. Hallelujah. So, please come, sir. I offend a government and they are about to destroy me. Listen, please. About to destroy me. And the Bible testifies that I have no power in myself. And then someone comes. And while I'm on my way to destruction, he interrupts. And he says, I love you too much to let you keep gambling and trying your way. This is what I want you to do. Stand back and watch me pay the price. And while he was on the way, 
while they were flogging him in his mind he was saying mankind i hope you are watching this would have been you i hope you are watching i hope you are watching the scars as he began to bleed he said i hope you are watching see if two people come and they tell you they love you the best answer to give those two people is i'm watching because love is a verb are we together now i am what all kinds of things have told you they love you but they left you but jesus said watch my love i'm not going to make noise about it first stand back and while they flogged him he said if it's for you i will still go the extra mile and they flogged him the father gave him he gave his health the father gave him he gave his prosperity the father gave him when we say his life let's break it down what what is in his life that he gave because that's what he gave you what was in the life of jesus the ability to reign and rise above sickness and diseases the father gave him he gave it away in exchange the bible says he was rich but he gave it are we together now he had a reputation of dominion but he laid it aside i hope you know that they stripped him naked the covering you see around is just for social reasons when you're watching movies a 33 year old man naked children watched him adults watched him people mocked at him and said you claim to be a king and he said this is all for you are we together blood dripping out from every part of his body every time he was tempted to give up he said no if i give up where i stop is where you must continue and i know that even if it was for the last nail you still would not be able to take it see listen if you think what happened on the cross is what jesus just died for physically you'll be deceived because there are human beings who have been crucified what he stopped you from was not the physical activity it was what was happening in the spirit you can do the physical one i guarantee you people have been crucified but you don't know what that meant in the spirit a lot was interplaying in the spirit while that was happening he became adam from gethsemane from gethsemane to the cross he was no longer the christ he was jesus adam the very man of sin mortality came upon him please listen and the father kept watching he had given him and he knew that it is more blessed to give than to receive so there was no negotiation about receiving the blessing was that he would bring many sons into glory are we together now when they took him to that cross and they nailed him as his blood began to drip upon the earth and in that excruciating pain it was a way of torturing criminals he was not just looking at mary and john he was looking at you he was looking at me he was looking at every witchcraft in our family and every ordinance of darkness and he said if it's for you i will do it but he made a very interesting statement we are going to establish tonight three words that represented victory it is finished oh hallelujah i didn't study english but i know that when a man says it is finished it is finished is a reality that is present and continuous forever not it was finished you would have said the condition for it finishing has changed so we have to start another one it is finished the question is what is the it that has been finished first that inability to access the father we call it lack of righteousness he said that error is finished that that 
that that Christianity that has to do with ceremonial cleansings, having to atone for your sins by your own strength, have brought it to an end. That ability of saying qualify and come to God. He said it is finished. You now will come through my own invitation. My own access. Like I organize a program and I invite someone. And while you are about to drive him, I say no, no, no. That's my guest. Come. But you are not only his guest. He also made you the one to be celebrated. Please listen. There is a dimension of this we have not learned. And this is what I want to teach us. When Jesus went to hell and met Satan, a discussion transpired. And Satan said, remember Adam. And he said, I don't remember Adam. I am him. Don't you see? This is Adam. And Satan knew it was true. Because only Adam had the right to collect the key. No other man could collect the key. And so he went as the second Adam. And said, you killed Adam. And every man that came from him, let me have the keys. Revelations 1 verse 1, when you read down what? I am he that was dead, but now I am alive and I hold the keys. He collected the keys. Listen. Access to the earth, access to dominion, access to God's life. That's the most important part. The life of God. I'm going to explain it. When he resurrected, watch this. Did you know that if he just started walking and doing all of the things he did, man would not be able to partake of it because he had not ascended to heaven. It would just be that he was victorious. And then the Bible says, according to the book of Hebrews, that he went to heaven as the high priest, the lamb, the sacrifice, as everything. And then he took his blood, poured it upon that tabernacle, and said, Father, you are just for seeing that man does not have access to divine health and all of this because you are a just God. Your throne is founded upon righteousness and justice. The Bible says they are the foundations, meaning there's no negotiation that will bend it. But now he says, every time you think justice, let mercy begin to speak. Watch this. I really want you to get a revelation of this. It will change your life. Every time the voice of judgment, the voice of mess of, of, of justice begins to speak, I will not fight it. But remember that I not only paid the price, I paid the price for everybody who will be an offender on this path. Are we together now? When that happened, a coronation happened in heaven we see that coronation the psalmist gave us a revelation and from philippians chapter 2 the bible says a name an office an identity was given to him in heaven to sit upon that throne are we together now and the bible says anything that has to do with man's redemption man's vindication must pass through him meaning a man is only condemned when he condemns that man. A man is only justified when he justified. The father put it in his office. Are we together? Watch what he did. When he sat down on that throne, he told man, there is another dimension you do not know. I know that I paid the price for you, but I want to teach you another dimension. We paid it in covenant. Listen. You did not participate in anything. But out of my love, I took you and made it as though in me, you were the one who paid that price. So not only did he die for you, you died in him. Are we together now? So in Christ, every man's iniquity, every man's um, basis for accusation was nailed in Christ. Paul saw this in Galatians 2.20 and he said, I have been crucified with Christ. 
nevertheless he said i live yet not i but christ is an exchange he died for me now i live in him in other words the day jesus christ dies there is no reason why i should be alive because we are in him so my life is no longer something i get outside of him my life is an overflow of what i have received from him and he so designed that from that point hence listen everything i derive will be because of him in him and with him my joy is because of him my prosperity is because of him please listen my peace is because of him so at no point in this kingdom would i be found leaning on my own strength because the moment i lean on my own strength the judgment of the law catches up with me the only basis for vindication is to be in him this is what he said he says he that abides in me and i abide in him he said the same will bear much fruit he said for without me the word without means outside of me and everything that i have done ye can do nothing the basis of the believer's victory is what christ did on the cross but not just what christ did on the cross because that's what a lot of people say oh i know what he did no let's continue john 3 verse 16 please give it to us so that we can finish up it's not enough to know what jesus did that's not where i'm going tonight this is the part that concerns you that whosoever believes believes what no 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 it didn't say that whosoever believes anything there is a specific thing you have to believe to have life you can believe jesus is a prophet it never gives life you can believe jesus is a healer it doesn't give life are we together he says believe in him who is the him who is the him no you see you see where we miss it we have been believing in rubbish who is the him who he said god no believing in god doesn't give you life who is the him that's where i want us to get to tonight you, you see that our confusion is the reason why we cannot manifest the reality of god's life we believe but what do you believe are we together you can believe the shepherd believe me you will not be saved believing in the shepherd does not bring salvation are we together believe in him who is him the bible i love the way the bible puts it as many as believed in him see that brothers and sisters i am many things and all of those dimensions can give you different operations of me are we together a child believes a father a worker believes a ceo a jimmy's daughter believes in her father she doesn't believe in a ceo we believe in a jimmy the multi-millionaire that's what you believe you will never get fatherly love from that dimension are we together now you may get financial advice you may get intelligence you may get all of this i believe in professor femi you will get the intellectual dimension there is a dimension of god you must believe to have life many of us have believed him as a healer you can be healed and still go to hell please hear me many of us have believed him as a savior you can have I mean you can have a um, what do we call it uh, as a shepherd what dimension of him have you believed i will tell you now ready there is a dimension of him you must believe to be saved whosoever calls upon the name of the lord 
shall be saved. What is Lord? The word Lord means a conqueror. Are we together now? Listen, please. It's not just a savior like the one who died. He didn't resurrect as a savior. He died as a savior. He did not resurrect as a savior. He resurrected as Lord, a winner, a champion, one qualified to transfer what he has. And the Bible says, whoever believes that, listen, whoever believes in him, that name that was given, he said he shall not perish. The word perish is not the word go to hell. Are we together? Because the Bible says, whoever does not believe is already condemned. Shall not perish. Here it is. But have money. But have. The word everlasting is a wrong interpretation. Everybody has everlasting life. Everlasting life is life that does not end. Your, your life does not end. You only change location to continue the living. That's why we never say, will you spend eternity? You must spend it. The question is where? Are we together now? Don't mind this, my funny friend. Where will you spend eternity? Not will you spend. You must spend it. The word eternal life there is the word divine life. Is the Greek word zoe. I know you've heard it. Many of us quote it, but just listen. The word zoe, listen. Let me describe it for you. It's a life that does not want depend on any external impute for its sustenance. It's a life that has the capacity to reproduce anything it needs within itself. Are we together now? Like you do not have to source for anything. Within that system is self-sufficiency. Within that system is the ability to be any and everything. That life can become hell. That life can become victory. That life can become wisdom. So when the Bible says we have life, it doesn't mean we just have a new way of breathing in and out. No. Something came upon you that all of a sudden translates you. Please, I want you to believe this. The Bible says the focus in the whole story is the believing part. Whoever believes in him, the Lord, who was a savior, became a conqueror, now sits as a king. The father gave the son. The son gave his life. Your job is to receive that life. When you receive that life in reality, the Bible says certain things will begin to change. You see, the life is a programming. The moment it enters you, it deconstructs itself to different dimensions. Please listen. The life of God is not just a vague thing that comes upon. No, 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 no. It is the life that begins to open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom. It is the life you have received that begins to immune you from the activities of darkness. Many people have not received this life. They want healing, but they have rejected the life of God. Many people have come out for altar call. Father, I, I, I'm, I'm born again. I believe in you. This and that. But they have not received it. He said, as many as received. Brothers and sisters, you can reject it. Many seated here have rejected it. I give you my ATM card. You refuse to collect it. You can reject it. Yet you need what only my ATM card will give you. You can borrow money from Pastor Lawrence. Borrow money from... Uh, a promise and so on and so forth and I say take my ATM card the point is you don't just take it and hold it when you take the card something will make you turn behind and begin to read and follow you see the life of God is not how do I put it now it's not like something you just put in your pocket alright look at this I have this handkerchief so we say I have the life of God do you have it yes no that's not the idea of the life of God the idea of the life of God is like a programming. Something enters you and begins to walk in you. It is God who is at work in us to will and to do. So it's working. The moment the life enters you, it's like a genetic mutation. 
it starts altering your configuration are we together now and the holy spirit is the custodian of that life when he comes he begins to open you up to the realities of the kingdom all of a sudden listen because of that life you are now spiritually alive you can have the sensitivity to know that life was not supposed to be like this why am i always failing you will never just know that ordinarily it takes that life to open that awareness in you are we together now it's like glasses you all of a sudden start seeing life from another perspective no i'm not supposed to fail like this i can't i can't just be taking it like that again something must change no i've seen a trend in my family people don't get married till they are 45 i'm noticing that something in my external environment is fighting the reality of that life and the bible says he who has the son has eternal life so way god's kind of life now watch this although you have that life it takes the ministry of the holy spirit please listen to open you up to the operation of that life so that you can receive the fullness of the benefits of that life this is where a lot of people miss it oh i have life i have life the same way you say i have a car the same way you say i have an atm card can you use it i have given it to you do you know how to activate the operation of that life do you know how to make that life work in you? We have been taught that it works automatically. No, sir. No, sir. You can claim to have the life and still die of sickness. Now, this is where Satan's ministry comes. The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill. If you don't have anything, he doesn't come to steal. Are we together now? Satan comes. His first ministry is deception. What is deception? Painting an untrue picture and convincing you to believe it. So you believe that I do not have this life. If I truly had this life, I should not be sick. Are we together now? If I have this life, I should be doing exploits academically. If I have this life, now listen. Here is where the confusion has come in the body of Christ. There are those who are saying you have this life. There are those who are saying you don't have this life. You better fight your way into receiving it. Both of them are incomplete. On one side, you are seeing the supposed by faith. You believe, you know, you acknowledge that that life is in you. But then you are not seeing the difference the Bible said should be produced. Are we together now? This is the dilemma of many Christians. I gave my life to Christ from the day I got born again. My life has not changed. It's been 10 years. I will tell you why. Eternal life is being frustrated within you. Because you have not been taught how to release and activate the operation of the content of that life. It's like buying a phone. You admire it. You look at it. But you do not know how to work with it. That was the lamentation of the psalmist in psalm 82 from verse 5 he says they know not not they have not they know not neither will they understand he said they grow in darkness and so the foundations of the earth are out of course the next verse says have i not said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high he says but you shall what die like men men listen please listen an heir as long as he is a child does what the bible starts by calling him what an heir a partaker of an inheritance a partaker of a reality but it says as long as he's a child the word child here is devoid of strategy devoid of the ability to understand the operation of that process he said he differed not from a slave I can receive the life of God that contains health, vitality, prosperity, and still be under a curse. I tell you, hear me, brothers and sisters. 
because we misunderstand the prophetic dimension of God's word. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. But we do not know that the communications of God are twofold. There is the prophetic communication of God, speakings according to his realm of existence. But there is the experiential manifestation of that prophetic word. It is the nature of God to call things as though they already appear. Are we together now? Hebrews chapter 2, he put it very beautifully. He said God had put all things under the subjection of man. He said God did not leave anything left, but he said as it is now, we do not yet see all things. Are we together now? So, you have come to answer the altar call. The life is in you. But you went back and the exact same thing you know happens when a man is under a curse is happening to you. Now you went to a pastor and said, Pastor, you said if I'm born again, this thing will leave. But you, the person said, yes, is it not in your Bible? We're all ready together. Now you are born again, brothers and sisters. But the truth is, if you will be sincere, you are still seeing those traces as if nothing happened to you. So it puts believers in a dilemma. There are those who are saying, keep believing that it's gone. One day it will go. Hey, wonder shall never end. If you have that kind of ideology, you are in for trouble. And then on the other hand, there are those who act as though they really have nothing. So they are trying. They live per day. We survive today. Let's see how the war of tomorrow will be. I know that there will be all kinds of things. Are we together now? So although they read that there is victory in Christ, the truth is they don't believe it. They just know let's fight per day. They are the ones who suspect everybody and everything. If Sam looks at you like this is a sign that he's an enemy. So they live their life with the consciousness of an aberrated perspective of warfare. And by warfare, they mean a consistent, never-ending contention. Both are wrong. Are we together? This is prophecy. But there is a place for the manifestation of prophecy. Jesus Christ has done everything he needs to do. But I have a role to play. Nobody gets saved just because Jesus died. You will go to hell. There is a response. Please listen. The idea of grace does not mean not participating. No. The idea of not participating in a process to call it grace is an aberration. Are we together? Uh -huh. the difference between grace and the law is what kind of participation there is a participation that is unto the flesh there is a participation that is a response of faith that is the participation that brings results are we together now so if the bible says by tithing you open your heavens when I'm tithing I'm not acting under the law. I'm not trying to do something. I am responding. There is a difference between doing something to gain righteousness. But in any case, there must be reception by faith. And that in itself is a participation. This looks very simple, but it's at the foundation of the lack of results and the miracles that many people are, are not receiving. I don't want us to waste this night and just get up and see people fall under the anointing and celebrate miracles and go back. I want you to live victorious. If all you think is healing, you will be frustrated. If all you think is on my own, think God's life and all its content is away. The life of God. That can become any and everything. Any and everything. Christ has been made unto me through his life wisdom. He's been made unto me strength. He's been made unto me prosperity. That life is the word. And as the word opens up, it shows me the dimensions of its operation. And then I look out first to believe. Number two, to respond. 
Everybody say believe. Say respond. This is your part as a believer. You, when you respond to what you do not believe, is a waste of time. So the Bible says, whoever believes in him, you receive. But that life begins to teach you certain things. And you respond to those teachings. Please listen to me. Part of what that life teaches you is that Satan is a trickster. He's a deceptive person. And he will not, just because you have life, leave you. The Bible says he left Jesus for a season. The next time he would come, he didn't come directly again. He came through Peter. And Jesus said, I still detect you. And the devil says, do not, I mean, God said, do not be unaware, speaking through the apostle, of the devil's strategy. Are we listening to me, please? Because many people get up bragging. I'm not under any curse. I'm not under this. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the Lord. That's not a lie. But you have not learned how to participate in response to make that an experiential reality. So you will still brag around and die like mere men. Are we together now? I really believe in Jesus Christ. And I really believe in his word. But I also believe in the principles that the revelation of his life releases. And my obsession is to always find out where is my part in this. Brothers and sisters, there is a part. There is a part that you have to play. Believing is not enough. Believing talks of conviction, persuasion about the truth of a person or a statement. But there must be a response. Your response is your action of faith. So the Bible says this in the book of Hebrews. There remained a rest, a Sabbath for the people of God. In spite of what Christ has done, there still remains a rest. And then it says, let us therefore labor. This is Paul in the New Testament. What is the idea of labor? Push God aside. No. Let us find out our place of response. Let us therefore understand the operations of the kingdom. So that we will know where our place of alignment is. And he says whoever labors like that. There is a guarantee. He will enter his rest. There is a way you will align. That sickness will run away from your body. Believe me. It's not just by claiming. Um, you will claim and be shocked. There is a way you respond. Remember during our time of fasting. We're showing you different mysteries. These are all the components that are called the life of God. Right? He gave you life. But it takes faith and it takes an operation of the spirit. So Satan has kept many people bound for two main reasons. One, they have rejected the life. And the solution to that is an altar call. I'm going to do that shortly before we start ministering. The second is he has kept people in Delusion and ignorance. Never trivialize the role of deception in a man's destruction. Deception. The first deception is that you don't need to do anything again. Oh, brothers and sisters, hear me. I fear God. It's a big deception. As free as salvation claims to be, if you do not respond, you are going to hell. There is always... A participation that's what we call koinonia everybody say participation if you will ever enjoy the healing dimension of God's life there is a participation if there will ever be prosperity there is a participation now the participation is a response of faith God credits it at the response of faith not an addition to what he has done it's a compliment So he would see a sick body and say, your faith, you believe I am able to heal you. 
you were convinced based on the report you had and now i gave you an instruction waiting for your participation you got up your faith he calls it your faith so what is your faith faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction of god's word believing is not faith no 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 believing is the first step to faith you can believe without having faith a believer is not a possessor a believer who responds is a possessor there are so many people listen to me who are trusting God for all kinds of things here I'm teaching you how to get results tonight God is not a herbalist there is a participation a Jimmy this is a gift for you what is he supposed to do watch this his response now he's standing up is a sign that he believes me I can choose to hide it please sit down sir sorry I'm using you hope I'm sorry I'm just doing this game with your husband hallelujah hey, Jimmy, do you believe I'm having a phone and that phone is for you if you believe it walk up to me faith this is faith the walking to me although he has not seen it so he's putting my integrity to the line it's up to me to prove that i'm not lying so i bring it out if he comes to me listen if he comes to me and i say ah i'm playing he believed i'm the one who is a liar and the bible said god looked for anybody who is greater than him so that he will show you he's not playing games are we together now let's look at one scripture thank you sir romans chapter 8 please romans chapter 8 let's look at verse 35 romans 8 35 just that one scripture and then we'll take an altar call and begin to minister romans chapter 8 35 okay give us from verse uh, 32 32 thank you everyone please read if you are a christian if you are a child of god this is good friday well even if you are not a child of god read i will soon make an altar call one to read he that spared not stop who is the he now god is trying to make a statement and is tying the certainty of that statement to something he had done before it's like saying he that built this bridge in kaduna and built it excellently is about to build something so in case you doubt what i'm about to do find out whether i did that thing or not he's about to make a statement and he's saying don't you dare doubt me for what i'm about to say he that did not spare his what own son but delivered him up for who what's the next statement how shall he not with him also freely give us what this is god speaking he said look at me your healing is a lesser thing i gave jesus what is healing i gave jesus what is witchcraft if i did not if i spared my son then you will know that there are some things i can spare but i carried my son i gave him and now i have gathered you to give you healing and you are asking god this my this i've been bleeding for six months non-stop and god said if i spared not jesus i will not spare anything whatever it would take me to prove myself i will do it if it means me killing somebody i will do it i i gave my son who will i not be able to kill listen this is the basis for conviction so every time the devil is trying to say look 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 will that prophecy work just remember jesus jesus begged the father to have mercy the father refused so listen jesus said father reconsider the father said you are joking stay there and now god is saying i want to bless you and the devil is saying no and jesus is saying god is saying just believe me and watch how i will do anything it takes is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am is there anything
anything Too hard for me to do I am that I am Yeah Is there anything Too hard for me to do I am that I am Hallelujah If the father Did not give Jesus It's like a man Listen It's like a man who vowed to punish Every offender And he saw his wife And the guy said I'm a just person And he punished his wife Then somebody throws a and says Oh God you know we are Nigerians What do you think he's going to do? You say, that's my wife inside the gutter. I'm a military man. This is my wife. I paid the price for six months to get a yes from her. She's in that gutter. I don't know the consequence of my action. If you think I'm going to forgive you, listen, if it took God refusing to even give Jesus a chance for negotiation for your sake, then I assure you, Whatever else it is that is holding you must leave you this night. Yeah. Hallelujah. Do you believe me? We are going to pray and say, Lord, help my own belief. That, listen, listen, listen. That spirit that makes me keep wondering, can God do it? Listen, don't, don't make that foolish statement tonight. I, I was praying on the, tonight, before I came here, I was praying on the invitation card for my neighbor's wedding. If you know the story behind that dear woman, she shared it here. All kinds of things. When I met her, the devil was almost destroying her life. Had fibroid that was almost big like the size of a baby. She shared her testimony here. Supernaturally, that devil of fibroid came out the way a woman gives birth. It came out like that without surgery. And people were saying, ah, um, can you marry? Time has gone. Time has gone nonsense. I prayed for the card. And to the shame of the devil, we are dancing to the heavens on the 6th of May. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, your limitation is self-imposed. Satan is a deceiver. He comes to you and says but can they really hear your voice we are going to pray the only prayer I want you to pray tonight is to challenge unbelief and say Lord I lift my faith I'm ready to respond based on my conviction lift your voice and begin to pray I have a part to play I lift up that wall of unbelief. Please pray, pray. You are able. Are you praying? Listen, please, just follow these instructions. I told you your response is where your faith is. There are things that should go 
don't just keep quiet and watch them the bible says speak to the mountain open your mouth and begin to mention them don't keep quiet mountain of financial hardship mountain of cancer mountain of mediocrity Oh, you must go, you must go in the name of the Lord Jesus. Say after me tonight in the name of Jesus the faith of God is at work in me I have the faith to receive I have the faith to believe I have the faith to respond please listen do you know what happened in Acts chapter 4 don't turn there the Bible says they went to a gate called beautiful please let me sit down sir watch this he says they saw a man who had been there and he, he he called on them for arms and he thought they were going to give him arms peter and john and he, he said silver and gold have i none he said but such as i have listen listen i give unto you what did he have he said in the name of jesus rise up and walk the man was there sit down he was nothing happened why response did he believe peter yes did he get a miracle no why he, he could not respond and the bible says when peter saw him he said who taught you faith he held his hand and said respond 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 and the bible says peter held his hand and he leaping stood the power of god is released at the point of response not before never before at the point of response when I began to minister here, the Lord was speaking to my spirit. Who gave me a guarantee that the power of God will move? But as I began to speak, I put pressure. It's left for him now to defend whether he really spoke to me or not. God will not just get up and act. Listen, it was God that put this miracle service. You're leaving your house to come is enough response already. Are you listening to me? You're going to say, Lord, I put pressure on your integrity. You ask us to come, we have come. Lift your voice and pray. Don't be afraid of saying it. Pray. Lord, you ask us to come. You are the one who anointed this meeting to be a miracle service. Now, oh God, we are here. on his integrity we have come oh God that you prove yourself shake it shake it up we have come we have come hallelujah hallelujah now keep standing everybody before we continue there are people here i don't want you to waste your time and i don't want to waste your time there are people here inside and outside in all the overflows outside you are yet to make this decision the bible says this is the testimony that god has given us eternal life he said and that life is in his son he says he who has the son has that life please we're out of time we have very few minutes and there is a lot to do now wherever you are you are saying man of god i have heard your word i have been struggling with this thing but tonight i truly want to dedicate everything my all to jesus christ or you are saying man of god i have come out for an altar call before 
but for some reason honestly the pressures of life have pushed me and i need to make my way straight with the lord i'm tired of where i am those two categories of people inside and outside i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come out here right now god bless you quickly please i'll count just one to five if the holy ghost is speaking to you don't sit down thinking about it make your way very quickly one two run run like there's fire on the mountain especially those outside please you need to run run to jesus as you stand here please keep talking to him don't just stand looking at me god bless you run to jesus oh win that war win that war tonight this is an issue of your destiny koinonia can you appreciate them this is a harvest for the king of glory you're saying lord i'm tired of living my life my own way mismanaging my life on this easter friday i give everything to you keep coming you are saying lord easter friday you die for god so loved me he died for me i'm tired of living a life that is not worthy of my calling there are still people outside please run and catch up quickly quickly as the holy ghost is speaking to you and say join them make your way quickly you're saying lord i'm tired tired of habits tired of addictions run to the cross come running come running come running to the mercy seat keep coming hallelujah all of you in front in one minute i'd like you to talk to jesus christ please no smiling and pitching one another this is a serious issue please pray open your mouth by yourself and say lord i i come to you genuinely the lord is ministering to me that there are three ladies outside who should join them you wanted to go and one of your friends stopped you please friend be careful don't stand against anybody's salvation this night make your way to the front please and join them i'm seeing three ladies outside that the lord is calling one of you your friend was trying to stop you the devil is a liar please make your way to the front and then there are two others god is speaking to join them quickly before we start praying those of you in front here talk to your maker no man condemns you the blood declares mercy said no help me I'm not gonna let you go I'm not gonna let you sleep away You don't have to be afraid No man condemns you The mercy, the mercy at me all of you in front some of you are crying i don't care what you have done this one decision remember jesus every time the devil tries to condemn you are you not the drunkard tell him the drunkard is that guy on the cross something is about to happen to you right now oh yes oh you slept with somebody before coming here you say well i don't know what you are talking about but i've been crucified with christ he looked at the woman he said where are thine accusers he said neither do i condemn you go and sin no more lift your right hand and experience the power of the blood the power of mercy you just sing there is a fountain filled with blood very softly as i pray for them hallelujah listen brothers and sisters jesus can change your life don't stand here just making an emotional decision to go back there is power in the blood of Jesus say after me Lord Jesus from the depth of your heart say it again Lord Jesus I believe in you 
and this night I surrender everything my life my dreams my hopes my ambitions I surrender it to you I receive eternal life into my spirit I declare that from today I'm no longer a sinner I've been crucified with Christ and I have his life right now Jesus has paid the price I receive his life and I declare that I'm a new creation the old has gone I begin a new journey Satan you no longer have any accusation against me I pray for you keep your hands lifted father on this good Friday we present these souls as trophies to you this is a response to what Jesus did oh receive these souls koinonia present these souls as trophies of victory trophies of victory this is the sacrifice the rewards of the sacrifice hallelujah I pray for you I declare that your sins are forgiven and the power of sin over your life is broken forever every guilt the devil uses I don't care what it is tonight the same way you wash a dirty cloth in fact the way you bring a new one that's how the pages of your life is he gives you a new beginning in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah a big congratulations to you in the name of Jesus now listen I want you to do this real fast so you join us I'm about to minister to people now and we're going to be very very fast hallelujah I like you to follow the gentleman there are people all around they will lead you outside we want your information please you are born again now Christians don't tell lies make sure that you write your number you write your name just follow the instructions no fighting be patient until it gets to your turn they'll have your information and you quickly come back and join us in the service please do that as fast as possible so that um, you can participate fully in what is happening God bless you every other person begin to pray in the spirit rise up on your feet and begin to pray in the spirit and say Lord my time for visitation is here I won't give up no I won't give up I'll keep pressing on till my answer comes I won't give up Lord I won't give up I'll keep holding on until my change comes Lord I won't give up Lord, I won't give up. I'll keep holding on till my answer comes. I won't give up. Lord, I won't give up. I'll keep pressing on until my change comes. Please write your prayer request very quickly and submit them. Let's do it quickly, please. One minute, everybody. If you have the prayer request of, of... I understand that Koinonia is being streamed live right now. Can we honor God for that? Yes. It's being streamed live. We appreciate the media for their creativity. And for all our online people, we love you. The same power that is working here is the same power that will work everywhere you are. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So please, quickly quickly please your prayer request listen for those of us who are just coming i i don't want you to think this is some ritual believe me god answers prayers here god gave us a revelation hallelujah and the revelation was the revelation of hezekiah hallelujah when he took the threat letter and the bible says he put it before the lord and said lord behold their threatening 
so please write it very quickly and then ushers let's be very fast please help some people with papers next time maybe from uh, maybe two or three months from now we'll try to create expectation cards so that you can expectation cards leave her john leave her whatever she wants to do just let her do it hallelujah we're going to pray please quickly your loved ones please make sure the online community participate there's a god that answers prayers here remember we spoke about faith those outside ushers help them if i were you i'll begin to prophesy over my request and say i wrote you because you must live my life or you must come into my life Hallelujah. Now please begin to pass your request very quickly. Very quickly. Very quickly. My goodness. I tell you it's like a cloud that is heavy over this place. That's why I'm saying we should hurry up. We feel the rain of your love. We see the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear. See the rain of your love, feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear. So let it rain, let it rain. Would you open the floodgates of heaven? pass the prayer request very quickly once we start we're just going to move um, let me encourage those who came with sick people or those who came for healing please make sure you get ready so that when it's time we'll just do that very very quickly hallelujah very quickly and then um, we'll be able to minister to people no matter what your condition is one of the things that we're going to be releasing today listen we had an encounter um we just returned from ekiti state it's a lovely place and um, listen something really happened as they picked us from the airport in elorin to ekiti we passed a small village please listen a small village the border between kwara state and ekiti state and i saw one of the most miraculous things in my life I saw the obituaries of people listen 132 years 120 years it's like nobody died except they were 100 and something and in my mind i was saying guinness book of record has been lying to us for long and the, the interesting part of it listen is that the people they are not on glasses their dentitions are still exact they don't use crutches they are walking firm one of them was 
a senior apostle that died last year 132 serving in the ministry alive and doing well when i saw those obituaries i said there must be a grace for longevity there, there is a covenant in this lineage that brings longevity and i told the guys i said when we're coming back we're stopping here you can trust me oh the law of honor as soon as we got there we stopped and we came out we went to the women they could not understand english please quickly with a request and we told them we said we're pastors we went to minister in equity and we're going back to the north but we discern that there is a special anointing a strange grace for longevity and we want them to release upon us and then a lot of things happened that i may not say here and then they took us to one old man and the man just sat on his chair when we went they interpreted and they told him we came to receive that unction for longevity the man looked at us he said we should all kneel down and we got down on our knees and this guy began to pray and prophesy he's on record i'm sure maybe one of these days will play it was in yoruba i didn't care what he was saying Ejimi. all i know is that he was speaking a language and my spirit was receiving it this guy kept prophesying releasing that grace and that mantle upon that territory upon us i said that's right i knew that there's no mistake about this the moment we finished with him honored him so the seed into his life appreciated all the people we were on our way going back to the car and i felt in my spirit to go back and thank the women i went back to thank them and i saw a particular woman and they said this man 132 years this is his wife ah. when they said that i said interpret for them that we came for and the woman looked at me they can bear me witness she just tapped me and said you follow her we followed her into a room she just opened the door and i saw pictures from one side to the other she started showing me the pictures I thought he was the wife of the man when he was in his old age, you know, like Ketura. That was the one and only woman he married. That means that woman should be at least maybe 120 years or something. Alive. These guys can bear me witness. No glasses, no crutches, no nothing. I said, what kind of grace is this? Brothers and sisters, there are mysteries. You've heard me say this thing. And when we finished before we finished talking we all got down on our knees and we told the woman she first started singing a song i don't know what it was i don't care what it was this woman spent like 10 minutes just letting it out from her spirit and do you know i was i don't know if i was sharing with them i felt as if they put a crown on my head that's how as i was feeling i knew i got this thing immediately she got it i told her i said let's snap i held her hands and we got to the place we'll show you the video and we snapped and i said i'm standing face to face with a woman 100 and something alive dentition complete can speak no glasses ah it was you i was thinking about i was happy to transport that grace brothers and sisters we brought it it must land on you tonight <laughs> hallelujah I, mean, I was just looking i was looking to empty everything i had i said what kind of grace is this we went to minister in a university called Afe babalola university the man himself is 86 years alive and doing well in those regions if you are 80 years you are still a child believe me then when we were returning i saw the shock of my life 141 years one how many 41 i saw the obituary he just died 141 i said i got it let's see the devil that will manufacture himself from anywhere to come and take my life no see listen if you don't believe in transference of grace you will die young don't you ever think it was because of the food they are eating I didn't see any hospital around here. I just saw a church. And people, is you can be 190 and not be able to talk. But you are 141. The guy 132 was still serving as a man of God. You are cooking by yourself. And you died and left the wife. The, the mama tapped me. 
in this place once you are 60 years you hold crutches what cause is that i always believed it but now that i've seen it ah there's that song that says my eyes have seen don't play it my eyes have seen it there are many strange things that will fall today listen if you care you can receive if you don't when we were coming when we the plane and the plane was bouncing like a football i just remember that old woman i said plane you are joking i'm surrounded by too many mysteries please believe me hallelujah 86 years still a lecturer 89 years still a lecturer alive 100 and something years you see the women as if they are 50 something but some of them are in their 90s 80s hundreds that's grace brothers it's not about anybody praying for longevity there is an anointing that comes upon territories and tonight in the course of the meeting is when it's time to pray that please receive it we need to be alive to do a lot for the kingdom pray and say lord my spirit is open to receive everything you have for me Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Why do we do this all the time? We do this because there are spirits, listen, that stand in the way of people's destinies. Don't think that deliverance is just something we do mechanically. I'm about to pray because there are people who came here. There are those who represent families altars that have tied the destinies of men down i'm going to pray i tell you i sense a heavy anointing please the moment that happens i like you not don't just fall and stand up begin to pray and receive and reject everything that is not of god father your word says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance it says there shall be holiness and it said the sons of jacob shall receive their possessions therefore i pray every spirit every altar every manipulation of darkness that is responsible for the tragedy in any man's life inside the first overflow second and third as you shout jesus like fire let it begin to land on people right now one two three I command those spirits right now right now my goodness my goodness inside outside like fire is coming upon people is coming upon people is coming upon people hallelujah the Lord is giving me a very foolish instruction just lift your right hand that's what I hear right hand my goodness you don't need to shout just lift your right hand lift the drums just lift your right hand this don't mind me let me do my stupid thing the lord is giving me an instruction i see at least up to 33 people the lord is just saying i should stretch my hands the moment that happens i'm seeing like a stone being broken these are families altars in families lord according to your word right now at the count of three all the people and families involved i stretch my hands one two three let it happen right now right now right now right now right now just keep your right hand lifted shiba baba kata altars 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 right now shake it 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 in the name of the lord jesus bring them out those strange altars strange altars hallelujah lift your hands the lord is saying he is visiting fertility issues fertility issues barrenness whatever it is lift your hands at the count of three as you shout jesus anyone connected to you 
or anyone here under a spell of infertility at the count of three be broken one two three break 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 right now right now right now infertility there are some ladies feeling fire fire around your stomach fire around your womb fire around your womb fire around your womb is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking shake it is breaking hallelujah please lift your hands the lord is speaking to me there are people here everything you touch dies in your hand lift your hands please no matter what it is if it's a relationship it dies jakatarata mandereto shota at the count of three let fire fall every cause of bad luck at the count of three shout jesus one two three go 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 right now those altars those altars right now everything your hand touches dies people come around to help you and they leave you it's changing right now it's changing right now it's changing right now hallelujah sisters lift your hands any stranger that visits you in dreams lift your hands speaking to you planting things the lord is giving this instruction every spirit husband just for ladies i tell you many people will be free right now at the count of three it's like fire that will fall on you lord let it fall every entity coming to oppress these people planting barrenness bad luck one two three take it take it take it take it let them go now inside and outside let them go now let them go now let them go now let them go now my dear tap that lady for me yes that lady nodding an angel is touching you he's bringing a miracle for you right now that's what i see i see like cold sensation coming to your head a miracle and as it's happening to her may it happen to you right now in the name of the lord jesus christ lift your hands and begin to pray over your request let it rain please pray go ahead and just prophesy and say lord this marks the end of it the bible says believe in the lord your god pray pray don't look at me pray open your mouth and pray in the name of the lord jesus christ in the name of the lord jesus christ father we turn go ahead and pray lord my request is turned into a testimony i must testify 
by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Standing upon the eternal counsel of God, the hand of the Lord itself will bring this to pass. The burden is lifted in the name of Jesus. Are not angels ministry spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation? Let the ministry of angels begin to bring to pass every single request in this place. In the name of Jesus, we command the foundations of the earth. We command the firmaments. We command the waters to begin to align themselves towards the fulfillment of this request. We lift every burden placed upon the shoulders of men by the anointing of God's spirit. And we set these ones free in the name of Jesus, mighty and everlasting God, standing upon your promise to us, upon this altar, the heavenly portals opened in this place. We command a performance of the requests, the desires placed here tonight in the name of Jesus. We decree the heavens answer speedily. Everyone trusting you for the fruit of the womb, receive in the name of Jesus. Promotion from on high, receive in the name of Jesus. An end to demonic oppression, it happens now in the name of Jesus. Blind eyes open. Deaf ears open. Destinies moved forward. In the name of Jesus. Satanic burdens removed. In the name of Jesus. We thank you Lord because speedily. According to the seasons of life. They receive a performance. In the matchless name of Jesus we decree. Amen Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please rise up on your feet. And receive the prophecy. You can. I saw a spirit. And I'm praying for the students now. Please listen. When I was outside ministering, I saw a spirit like bees released to produce massive failures in the exam that is being written in the name that is above all names. I pray for everyone here. The kind of performance you have never seen, receive it in the name of Jesus. Shake it, Kappa. Shake it, the kind of performance I pray from the depth of my heart the kind of performance you have never seen receive it in the name of Jesus the grace for favor where you have labored and tried and it didn't work beginning from tonight step into a new dimension of favor step into a new dimension of favor every direction you have been praying and asking the lord to give you between now and next friday receive that direction receive that direction i want to pray for business people anyone in business lift your hands the strategy the strategy that you need to win in the name of jesus receive it right now may it appear to you in dreams in the name of jesus christ everything that has died in your hands i command it to come back alive in the name of Jesus Christ now I want to pray for you father that old Baba prayed and released upon our lives the mantle of longevity 132 still alive I pray for you please receive it me too I received it from the depth of my heart Lord you know that I wanted this not for self but for the house at 70 you are still standing strong at 90 you are still moving strong until you get to 120 no devil takes your life in the name of jesus hear me the force 
that immunes people from accidents comes upon your life right now the force that immunes people from terrorism and the wickedness it comes upon your life right now that spirit that kills people at the prime of their life when they labor and about to enter it takes their lives it leaves your life forever 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 hallelujah may you see your children's children to the fifth generation believe what i'm saying i've seen human beings bodily carrying this revelation you step into it in the name of jesus therefore anyone here that death is eyeing that you will not see the next miracle service or you will not see the end of this year i don't know how the plan is going on in the realm of the spirit but i avert it right now i avert it right now the same way you will live long physically everything that is good in your life lives long with you your health lives long with you your wisdom lives long with you faithful lives long with you two prayer points quickly where you have been rejected you step into a place i've experienced it all let me tell you something hallelujah i will never forget you know jimmy knows the story in 2007 i remember that time i went to collect a loan from a bank remember the story i went to collect a loan from the bank we had done everything and then when it was now time for them to give me the loan they embarrassed me i was humiliated the same people who were helping me it was as if a charm came upon them and i looked at that person and i vowed that till i die till i go to be with the lord i will not collect loan from anybody living or dead i made that determination from the depth of my heart i said lord if you cannot honor me let me die like that i pray for someone here see listen if doors are closing against you is demonic don't ever say it's because i don't know so 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 bad. if if the person knew me it's a lie there is a mantle the bible says everyone loved esther who looked at her like a garment you can wear it i pray that honor that brings receptivity receive it right now oh come on your amen is not loud enough receive it right now hallelujah the bible says you shall be as a delightsome land you know what a delightsome land is well desired in other words at any point you are seen you are invited i don't know who has disqualified you but i pray for you they may use your background they may use whatever let grace qualify you tonight let grace qualify you tonight koinonia i pray for you honor that you have never seen in your life from even people who can give birth to you begin to receive it strange honor in high places strange honor in high places in the name of jesus wave your hands and give god all the praise thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus whatever you have started listen something just came in my heart whatever you have started that ended prematurely because this what i'm there is an anointing for what i'm telling you whatever you start i don't care what it is whether it is relationship or whatever and it ended but not by god we put life back to it right now i say it again whatever you started that ended but not by god by a manipulation of darkness it jacks back to life right now in the name of jesus hallelujah give god praise my goodness i wish we had time i wish we had time
We believe you have been blessed by this message. For additional information, you can visit us on Facebook on www.facebook.com slash Koinonia Eternity Network International or follow us on Twitter www.twitter.com slash Koinonia underscore ENI. You can download our messages on www.foreshared.com Eternity Network International Replicating the fullness of God's life on earth. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our home page for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Katekato Kata Branda Kata Bakotosko to break a take and let her. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.